I am working in the house on my own at the moment, only for a couple of hours this morning while Dean is on another job. He will be joining me shortly. My job this morning is to remove the wallpaper from the ceiling in the front half of this room. That's, we're so nearly done with the wallpaper removing, there's like two more rooms that need wallpaper and taking off the ceiling and then we're done. Um, as you can see, there has been a rather large change. The wall got taken out. It was taken out last week at some point. Everything has moved very quickly. Um, we've kind of got all hands on deck at the moment because we're against the clock, but come the other side of our trip, things will slow down a lot more, I think. It's just because at the moment we're using as much spare time. All of our free time is spent getting as much done here as possible so that we can just leave it all ready for plumbing and, and electrics and plastering when we're gone. So there have been quite a lot of changes since the last vlog, so I'll do a quick whiz round and I'll show you. So as you come into the house through the hallway, we have taken this door out. Sorry, I'm not filming on a wide angle lens today, so it's gonna be a bit difficult to show you everything fully. But yeah, the wall, um, sorry, the door is out and it's been boarded up on the on the inside it's been left open at the moment here because electrics need to be run through all of that and then that will be all plastered over so that will be a lovely smooth wall and that will feel like a really nice clean entrance so as you walk through here on the left hand side this will be the sole entrance into this space so if I back up this this is where I'm taking the wallpaper off by the way if I back up you can see actually if I close the door that will give you a better, a bit better view. So as you can see, this is where the wall was taken out. Steel went in at the top there to obviously reinforce the weight of everything above it. Then we've kept a sliver on the sides here, just so it still feels like the two spaces are separate. And then it's been plasterboarded up, ready for plastering. That's been left uh, just because electrics need to be sorted there. So if I go into this space here, this will be the kind of cosier side of the space with the sofa, TV, that kind of thing. And then if I turn around and face the other way, this half of the room will have, if I really back up, you can see how, how much nicer it is now that this has been opened up. I just love the view straight through to the garden. Annoyingly, every time I've been here, it's been a really gloomy day, but Dean's been here on a couple of occasions when it's been really sunny and he said that the light that comes through here is so nice and because it's south facing it's it's light for a very long time it just gets bathed in light for hours so this space will be so nice once the bookshelves are all along the left hand side there obviously chimney coming out bookshelves all along the side floor to ceiling some chairs again the finer details obviously haven't been decided but the two kind of separate feelings of the room have been decided this will still feel quite I guess like relaxed and cozy but it would be a space that you could use to host as well I guess it will just feel less there won't be a plush sofa in there basically it'll be more like chairs and a table perhaps that could possibly change but the bookshelf is a definite a definite for that side of the wall um I think that is everything that's where the door was and this is the space a little bit closer up there have been no changes in the kitchen, obviously, because that's a whole other project that we will be starting at some point, maybe spring, summertime. Same with the downstairs bathroom. That's going to be completely knocked down and rebuilt. Like this whole side of the house is going to be, because it's, this is an extension already, so this will be knocked down and completely rebuilt and there'll be a whole extension that wraps around the side of the house. But that's something I can show you all and discuss in further detail much later down the line. Upstairs... The biggest change up here is the bathroom has been removed, which is great because we can now kind of visualise how this shower room is going to look. It's quite small, so we've really struggled with the configuration, but we think we finally figured it out. So we will, again, sorry, really can't illustrate this very well with such a zoomed in angle. Right hand side here will be a square shower space. So a wall will be built here that will go all the way up. This side will be a toilet, this side will be a shower with a glass door. There will be a window placed here to allow some light in. This window is actually going to be made smaller because we just feel like this sill is really low down and it just it's taking up a lot of valuable wall space. 
So it will probably, will probably take up about that much, I'd say. So we'll have all of this wall space here. And then on this side, we will have sink, vanity, some sort of thing. The configuration this side hasn't 100% been sorted out, but we know the sink and all of that kind of stuff will be that side. That seems to be the best decision that we've, the best kind of plan we've come up with at the moment. We've had about 20 different plans for this room and this one seems to work the best. Um, and then that's it, that is everything. There have been no changes in any other rooms. Just gonna record this to prove that I did not partake in any of this, which I'm sure will result in you breaking your neck. Well. <laughs> I've doubled the order. And this is, this whole, whatever this is. My bridge. Your bridge is all so that you can get the wallpaper off the ceiling in the hallway. Yeah. Is it coming off easily? Yeah. Okay. Just about. Hopefully you won't need the steamer because that will just be. I'll reconfigure my bridge maybe. Wearing this absolute monster of a coat today. I don't get enough wear out of this because it is so big. I think it just needs to be taken up by an inch or two at the bottom and then I feel like it won't be dragging me down so much. I don't mind actually how big the sleeves are. I'm fine with that. It's more the, the length of this because it's such a big coat. The length of it actually kind of weighs it down as well. Anyway, that's something I can get done over the summer so that next winter it will be... A better length um today cos cos crossbody bag the one that you're probably sick to death of seeing uh weekday rail jeans again just a plain black cashmere crew neck from uniqlo totem scarf that you just saw me tie ray coat i think cos did a very good um kind of like similar version of this i don't know if it's still in stock but i will link same with the bag i don't know if the bag's back in stock it kind of goes in and out quite regularly but as always things are linked um uh, did I say weekday rail jeans? I can't remember. I, th I think I did. And then tabby flats. It's very dry and sunny today. So I think I can kind of get, finally get away with something that isn't a boot or a, a hardy shoe, if you know what I mean. Right, I'm going to go to work because um, that, that's what I need to do today. Roll back to your biting point. Lift the leg and rotate across the body. Relax those shoulders. Start for the hold. Find the beat. I was so smug last week saying how organised I was with my packing, I was starting it early, blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, that's gone out the window. It's now Saturday and not a single thing has been put in the suitcase. I've got lots of piles of things to go in the case, but whether everything's going to fit in the case and how much that's going to weigh, anybody's guess. Um, so I really need to stop procrastinating and actually like get, get some stuff in the case. I might have to do some culling, but yeah I need to just get on it um my beauty though however is I'm I'm feeling very organized with my beauty everything's in its like pouches and it's 
its bags and everything. Um, I just emptied my in-flight liquids bag because I thought I'd show you what I put in here. This one's an old one from Boots, like really old, and it gets through the airport fine. I've only ever had maybe like two or three instances where someone at the air, like the people at security have sort of like looked at it a bit weirdly, but no one's ever asked me to take stuff out and put them put my things in one of those plastic bags they provide so we are flying at um 10 p.m so i'll wake up on monday and do all my skincare as usual but i probably won't wear makeup on monday um so i'll go to the airport sans makeup just with my skincare on and then once we're on the flight and everything's settled and we're allowed to sort of move around again that's when i will start my skincare because the main thing i want to focus on with the flight because the first flight's 12 hours is just keeping my skin as hydrated as possible so i will cleanse in the toilet <laughs> with either um this evlon balm cleanser that i've just put in a little travel pot or the suzanne kaufman purifying cleansing gel i'll probably just use the cleansing gel because i won't have makeup on if i had makeup on i would probably use the balm um, but I'm taking it just because, you know, it's nice to just take backups. Then once I'm all cleansed, I will start the skincare. So I'll put hyaluronic acid on first. This is a new one that I've just started trying from a brand called Horace. Then I will put Advanced Night Repair on. It's a big one. It's the 50ml one. Although I don't, can you even get a smaller one? But I can't live without this product. So I'm willing to, to give it a large amount of room within this bag. Then after that, I will put on an eye cream. This is the the Advanced Night Repair Eye Cream. And then I'll put a barrier cream on. So I usually use, in here is the La Mer Cream, is it called? It's just that really thick white cream that La Mer have done for years. Acts as a very good barrier because it's quite thick, so it just kind of locks everything in and keeps the skin hydrated. The other one I'm taking with me, and I haven't used this yet, is the Suzanne Kaufman Moisturising Night Cream. I imagine very similar to the La Mer one in um, just acting as a good barrier. So that's, that is literally all I will do on that flight. Maybe I will cleanse again and redo it at the end of the flight, I'm not sure yet. Then on the second flight, which is five hours long, I will do that all over again, but rather than putting the barrier cream on, I will put the Summer Fridays jet lag mask on because this mask is incredible. Um, I use this a lot if, I, if I've had a late night or if I've been drinking a bit. It just makes your skin look really healthy the next day. I will also take with me the Sicily Black Rose Cream Mask, uh, little miniature version. This will get used at the very end of the second flight as a way to just pep up my skin before we get off. We'll lead a skin food because you just never know when you're going to need this. Um, in the same vein as 8 hour cream. I, ca I can't go anywhere without this cream. Um, as approved by Prince Harry now, as we all know. Because it just can be used for anything really. And that... That is everything. Oh, toothpaste, obviously. That's everything. Dean takes like a hand cream with him and then that's it. So I'm going to use his bag to put my deodorant in. Although there have been times where I've managed to get away with not putting, like I've accidentally not put my deodorant in my liquids bag and it's just gone through fine. But I'll put it in his along with some liquid melatonin. So that's that. And then in my pouch of non-liquid things, I have hairbrush, a couple of sheet masks, hairbands, the medicine pouch, more hairbands because these are quite good for when I'm doing my skincare. Micellar wipes, um, dental floss, hair grip. I need to put my toothbrush in there actually, I mustn't forget that, I've got like a little travel one. So that's beauty. I then, oh, I would normally take my uh, gua sha with me as well, I need to put that in there. Right, I need to, I've, I've got to pack, haven't I? I've just got to do this, otherwise I'm going to be like panicking on Monday morning without packing a single... Right, this is it, this is the chaos. This is all the clothes I've pulled out, all about my favourite summer things. Um, whether I'm gonna take all of it is another question because at the moment this is just clothes and accessories. I haven't even got round to all of my bags and shoes, which doesn't fill me a lot of confidence in terms of getting this into the case. So I'll probably have to cull a few things. I'm kind of dreading how heavy this might be, but this, like packing for six weeks is hard. Um, but I'm trying not to pack in outfits. That's where things go wrong with a long trip. It's more about packing 
things that all work together rather than just like having an outfit because you know when you go on like a say like a four or a five day holiday well this is what I do I think of like specific outfits and then I have that outfit for you know like I have a set outfit for each day whereas that is certainly not the way I pack for a trip this long so yeah there's just like a lot of things that will hopefully work together as I'm sure many of you are expecting there is a lot of white there is a lot of beige and black because that is mainly the palette that I wear in the summer. And I introduced kind of like pops with, I guess, jewellery and a few other things. Um, and I've actually introduced a bit of green in within my packing. Kind of similar to how I started to introduce like pops of blue. I'm like, let's try some green. Uh, so I've got these DeVoe trousers with me. I'm, I'm going to take with me. DeVoe is in, um, a New York based brand. I recently did some work with them, actually. Took some photos of some of their pieces for an edit that I did for them, which I'll link below. Um, very like minimal brand, um, as you would probably expect from the kind of things that I like, but there's always sort of like a hidden detail, you know, something that you don't notice on first glance, but when you kind of inspect further, you see uh, an unusual detail. These trousers, I don't know if you can tell, but the seam on them is um, kind of like twisted. And this jumper actually that I'm wearing is also DeVoe and it's got like a flap here. Yeah. So I really like how they do that. All the des designs from afar look very simple and then as you get closer you're like, oh, there's got some sort of like unusual detail to them. And I figured olive green will work really well with white, it will look great with black. It's just gonna, I think this is gonna be an easier color than I first anticipated to style because it looks, when you put it with white, it just looks really fresh, a really nice contrast. Which kind of leads me on quite nicely to this green t-shirt that I got when I was in New York also. I went to the Devo show actually when I was in New York. Um, sorry, just to backtrack a little bit. And in their spring summer collection they use a lot of Mary Janes and I'm going to take my Mary Janes with me. So it's quite nice to see um, some styling references for Mary Janes. Anyway, back to this t-shirt. I got this from the row when I was in New York with the intention of it being sort of like a very summery piece. So I haven't actually worn it since I bought it. This is going to look so good with white, um, same as the Devo trousers, like it's such a nice contrast against the white, also really nice with black. I I've, I've tried it on with my mosquito beaded necklace earlier and I thought it looked really cool. So they're the colourful things, <laughs> along with my Tepla short, they're the colourful things I'm taking with me. Now let's move on to all of the plain things. I'm not going to show you everything, obviously, because we'll be here for ages, but I just thought I'd show you some of the the new things that I've got with me and some old favourites because I've I've really pulled out some things that I've had for like years. I got some pieces from Scale actually. So I went to their show in the summer when I was in Copenhagen. One of my favourite shows um, at Copenhagen that season. It was such a beautiful show. Like so many really like delicate patterns, lots of linen, just like the epitome of just like a breezy summer. Like it was just gorgeous. And again, everything was styled with Velvet Mary Jane. So I've been using that as a lot of, I've been looking at DeVoe and Scal as kind of like references and inspiration for packing for this trip, because I'm gonna take my Mary Janes with me. Um, this shirt, big linen shirt with a sort of like, I'd say almost like a brownie brick red stripe on it. That's gonna be great as a beach cover up. Also gonna be just great with like some loose linen trousers and shorts. This skirt, which I was so excited to wear this because it's beautiful, cream wrap skirt, almost like a sort of textured, not quite boucle, but it's got a texture to it with these this frayed detailing on the hem, all along the side. This gorgeous, such a gorgeous skirt. That's going to look great with my Mary Janes. I am taking other shoes, by the way, not just a pair of Velvet Mary Janes. And then this sort of like handkerchief style top, so it looks like that, but then the sleeves, sorry not sleeves, the straps are here, so it creates some really nice draping, and the fabric itself is beautiful. So there are some scowl pieces I'm looking forward to wearing. Taking a lot of hats with me, I love a hat on holiday, so I'm going to take this black straw one, this is quite an old um, Milena Bayer one, this is quite an old Cos one as well, a cap caps are always handy and then this totem one which is always a great source of hilarity on holidays because it is I guess it's a, it's a funny hat isn't it then what other interesting things can I show you a lot of what I'm taking is separates I'm not taking a lot of dresses with me because 
normally I'm a very dress heavy person, I love a dress, but at the moment I've just kind of not fallen out of love with dresses by any means, but I'm gravitating towards more separates. I think it's because with separates you can mix and match so much, it feels like you've got a lot more options. So I've got this, I've got this really big linen wrap skirt from Asino. Asino do such good linen pieces. I've also got a black wrap skirt from them that I must remember to pack. I wore that a lot last year. That's going to be lovely with just all the top options that I bought with me basically. I've also got these huge cotton trousers from Cordera. Big curved leg. They'll be great with like swimming cost, you know, like just like a bathing suit. Um, tank top. Also got my Tecla shorts, they're always great for the beach. This dress from Asino actually, this is really nice. Very simple black linen dress, like floor length one, tank style, which when I tried it on, I styled it actually with like a belt round the middle, it looked really nice. What other things? I'll show you more about the basic things that I'm taking with me. So I always, when I go on holiday, take my another tomorrow bodysuit so i've got a white one and i've got a black one then so that was really then i will take a couple of different vests so i've got this stripy one from nothing written that always goes with me on holiday because it looks great with white jeans i've then got this sunspell one this one always comes with me on holiday as well because it's such a great fit then I have a white version of the row green t-shirt. What else have I got? Got a Breton from Mato. I also like to bring with me this silk cami. This is a really nice one from and other stories about six years ago now, maybe. Ah, shorts. These are always great. I think I raved about these when we went somewhere. I can't remember where, but I have spoken about these before. They're the Uniqlo Chino shorts. They're really comfortable, they're lightweight, they're just great. They come in like five or six different colours. I'm not sure if they're actually available, now, uh, right, available right now because I don't know if they'll be available right now in the UK anyway because of it being winter. But I've got them in white, I've got them in green, and they're great for when you're on the beach, they're great for when you're going hiking, they're great for just everyday wear. All round, a very good pair of shorts. What other good basics can I show you? Ooh, suitcase I can fell off the bed. I've got these beige linen trousers from a brand called Datura. I mean, they speak for themselves really, don't they? And then this is kind of like a white version. You know that scowl shirt that I just showed you? It's kind of like a white version of it. I got this last summer and pretty much wore this every day when I went on holidays because it's so easy to just throw on over a um, over a bikini. The last thing I'm going to show you, which was actually really helpful last summer, was this kind of like cotton wrap. This was from the same brand, Arles, Arles. Same brand as this shirt. This can double up as like a kind of like a blanket, like you can put it down on the sand and sit on it. But I used it a lot as like a wrap, just to put around my waist, so it just kind of sort of like covers up my bikini when I'm like, going to the beach or like leaving the beach to like go for lunch or you, do you know do you know what I mean when you just want something to just cover this area so you're not just walking around with a top and your bikini bottoms. Um, I've got all my jewellery, just my usual jewellery that I always wear. Um, I think they're the things I really wanted to highlight the most. I'm going to take my, I'm going to take a pair of flip flops, just classic black ones. I will take my Velvet Mary Janes. I will also take my Jill Sander Birkenstocks, the black ones. I'm also going to take, I've got a pair of the, um, are they the Arizona style Birkenstocks, the ones with the two straps. I've got those in a taupe suede, I'll take those. And I'm also going to take my Grenson Fisherman sandals. I was going to take my, um, my Margiela Tabby Ballet Flats, but I don't think I'm going to get enough wear out of these. I might wear them, you know, like occasionally on an evening, but I'm certainly not going to wear these during the day. So I'm thinking I might leave these and actually take my Ginza flip-flops instead, because I think they are a bit more of a practical, wiser choice. 
And there was one more thing I was going to just, I'm taking my, I'm obviously going to take my Izumayaki pleated long dress because it's super breathable, it's really comfy, it's just an easy one to chuck on and I think that's what I want with everything here is just ease and just com feeling comfortable. Yeah, I should actually pack this stuff now. Sorry, my hair's quite fuzzy right now. I washed it first thing this morning and I've just let it air dry today because whenever I fly my hair just gets so greasy <laughs> I don't know what it is so I thought if I wash my hair on the day of departure fingers crossed by the end of the flight my hair won't be too greasy um I'm about 90% packed just a couple more things to put in and then and then I think I'm done the house is all clean a couple more errands to do and then we're ready to go we're getting the train down to the airport instead of driving so I'm just trying to figure out what to wear because we've got a three hour journey. It's quite cold outside. So I kind of have to factor in the journey there to the airport and then the journey back when we come back home, if you know what I mean. So trying to be comfortable, but warm at the same time. I would really like to wear this with this really nice Devo coat. Got a really nice sort of cinched shape with a singular button, very sharp shoulder. So it's a nice way to sort of, I guess, smarten up my slouchy layers but then I'm off to the airport and I'm thinking does it really like why am I overthinking this why am I worrying about if I look chic or if I you know I'm just going to be sat in an airport so I'm also thinking this might not be the most um practical to be taking around Australia with me for six weeks because I certainly won't be wearing it in Australia um but we can appreciate it we can appreciate how beautiful it is but sadly, I'm thinking I need to put on something that's a little bit easier to carry around with me. Something shorter, slightly lighter weight, but still will keep me warm. Underneath, I've got my Co cashmere jumper on. This is maybe a year, two years old now. I'm, I don't think they do this anymore. Um, House of Dagmar trousers, Marie H sneakers from the row. And then in my carry-on case, I've also got some knitted trousers to change into. I've also got a t-shirt underneath in case I get too hot. I think the Whistles leather jacket's going to be the best option, you know, because it's quite easy to like carry around. It's quite easy to fold down. Might come in use in an evening, probably not, but it feels like the better option than a long, heavy coat. deciding whether we want to just go for a walk around Fremantle or do we just sit by the pool and just have a snooze and wait until our room is ready and just keep our fingers crossed that the room will be ready earlier than 2pm. I am leaning more towards the, the latter for sure, would love to just sit by the pool, soak up some sun and just have a snooze and read my book. Um, the journey actually wasn't too bad, everything went very smoothly. We had a five hour layover in Singapore, which I was kind of dreading because five hours is quite a long time. But thankfully, the Singapore airport um, is quite a good airport and you can pay to use lounges. So we paid to use the, I think it was the Sats lounge in Terminal 3, and then the showers, which was really nice. We had a shower in between the flights. Um, yeah, it, it's a long journey and you just kind of have to surrender yourself to it and just accept that you're not going to feel too great, you're probably not going to sleep that great, um, and you're going to feel pretty gross at the end of it all, but um, it's all worth it to be in Australia. We're very excited. Dee's just put a short sleeve t-shirt on. <laughs> I'm 
I'm gonna go get changed and see some better clothes because I've worn the same clothes for the past 24 hours. <laughs> It is, what day is it today? Friday. No, it's Friday, isn't it? I think it's, day, it's our third day here, I think. And I feel like we've managed to curb the, um, the jet lag. Well, no, let's not. Let's not jinx it, but we've been going to bed at like midnight and getting up at like six, seven-ish, which I feel like is quite good, because normally you get this sort of like witching hour where 4 a.m. you're wide awake. So fingers crossed we've managed to like somehow dodge it. Anyway, we are going to Bob Nest today. We're just waiting for the ferry. Um, so we're going to spend the day there. We we had a very relaxing day yesterday, didn't we? We just sat at Bathers Beach for the whole day, pretty much. Yeah. Which is very nice. And then went for dinner at a place called Emily Taylor, which was also really nice. We've only got one more full day here, haven't we? So we're going to go to South Fremantle tomorrow, check that beach out. And then on Sunday we, we go pick up a hire car and drive down to Mount Wilbur. absolutely distraught by it and is now already I mean the grieving process is done and you're talking about getting a new one <laughs> Time in Frio has come to an end. We were only here for like three days. Um, we're now waiting for the bus to take us to Fremantle train station and from there we're going to Perth to pick up a car and drive down to Margaret River. Don't you look lovely in your new shirt? Yeah. It's the bus. Whoop whoop. So I'm actually gonna abruptly end the vlog here. Um, just because I've been sat editing it and this feels like a good place to end it because 
the next part would be the start of our next stop, which is Yalingup, which is where we are now. And I kind of want to start the vlog. I think it makes more sense to start the vlog from, like start afresh from Yalingup and then the rest of our time in Western Australia. And then the vlog after that will be when we go to the east. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little snippet of the start of the Australia trip. Um, and unfortunately Fremantle was mostly spent being jet lagged. Um, we kind of accommodated for that though, which is why we booked into a hotel because we kind of just wanted like a nice room and a nice bed. But in hindsight, we actually wished we had booked somewhere in South Frio. Um, just because when we got to South Fremantle, we felt like that was more us. Um, our hotel was in East Fremantle and it didn't feel like there was as much there. So we got the bus into central Fremantle every day or down to South. Um, so yeah, if we'd done it again, we probably would have gone, stayed in South and also just extended it by a couple more days, I think, because every evening we were just knackered and we didn't really want to go out. So I feel like we missed out on some really nice restaurants, um, nice bars, but I probably, we probably will come back here eventually. I say here, like we will go back to Fremantle eventually. Um, so yes, um, what else can I say? I think that's it. I shall see you all in the next one.